If you have your Bibles, we'll pull those up here. Uh, it's Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 5. And you might be thinking, we do know this scripture. I think it is, but I think there's some new thoughts that God's going to give us here today. So let's read them here together. Here we go, Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, in gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen over you. And the heathen shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes and look around and see. They gather themselves together, and they come to you. Your sons shall come from afar. Your daughters shall be nursed at your side. Then you shall see and flow together, and your heart shall fear and be enlarged. And because of the abundance of the sea shall be converted over to you. The forces of the Gentiles, the pagans, will come to you. Secondly is in Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. I particularly want to look at the New American Standard here. The way it says it. Verse 33. No man has lighted a candle or puts it in a secret place. Or puts it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that they which come may see your light. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore your whole eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. If your whole eye is evil, your whole body will be full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that that light which is in you does not become darkness. If your whole body Therefore is full of light, having no dark part, the bright shining of a candle as it gives light. Here's what the New American Standard says. It says, you will be wholly illuminated as a lamp will illuminate you with its rays. And then in Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5. And we're going to look at verse number 6 to verse number 20. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things comes the wrath of God on the children of disobedience. Be not partakers with them. For you are sometimes in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light for the fruit of the Spirit in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is that acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is a shame to even speak of those things which are done of them in secret, but all things are exposed and are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever is exposed comes of light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleeps, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly and not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Some thoughts were coming to me last evening, and so I took a few moments and wrote them down. Now, in our first reading, which we read, it says that arise, shine, for your light is come. Amen? Arise, shine. And then it says, darkness shall cover the earth. 
this darkness that he's talking about is not a physical darkness. We're not having like days and days of night or without the sun. However, what Isaiah is speaking about is that this which was coming is now here. This is a darkness that is upon people's minds and hearts. It is a conscience that does anything wrong with no accountability. It does not have a sense of right or wrong. At least one half of our United States population right now are groping in this spiritual darkness. Consciences are seared with a hot iron. There is no right. There is no wrong. There was a young man in Portland, Oregon that had a Jesus hat on. And people from Antifa, Black Lives Matter, that kind of thing, shot him twice and killed him for wearing a Jesus cap. That, my friend, is gross and utter darkness on the hearts and minds of people. Burning, looting, murders, all in the name to overthrow our president or, please don't misunderstand this, this is not about the Republican Party and it's not about the person of Donald Trump. It's about values that we believe as Christian people. Amen? Amen. And the Bible tells us that we need to be people who arise and shine, especially in these difficult times. They have burned Bibles. Have you seen that? They have burned churches. They have burned synagogues. What they're saying, if they could, is we would burn you up, but we can't do that. But they hate us so much that they would kill us if they could kill us and get by with it. That is what we call utter darkness. Amen? That prophecy that Isaiah gave is fulfilled now. It's not coming. It's not received. It's here, right now, among us, in our country and culture. Secondly, the devil knows that his time is short. The Bible says in Revelation 12, 12, that because he knows his time is short, he is pulling out all of the stops unashamedly, and there's three ways to stop somebody. One is to do the COVID thing and put, shut down the churches shut them down. That's what they're doing in California. They have churches of five, ten thousand people, they'll allow twenty-five people in there. And then they say, but you can't praise the Lord because COVID could come out your mouth. And it's like, at some point, ladies and gentlemen, you have to take a reality check. Now, is COVID real? I went to a funeral yesterday of a man who died with COVID, but he had a lot of other problems too. So we understand there is a problem, but the problem is not God. COVID is not God. I see people, elderly, they wear their masks while they're driving by themselves. You are not helping anybody and you are not hurting anybody. You have the right to do that. But it's a spirit of darkness that says, you have no identity and we don't want your face to be seen and we don't want the words to come out of your mouth sit down, shut up, mask up. We do not want to hear from you. Do you understand that? Yes, that's right. I know there is, and I do occasionally. Most of the time I forget. The Bible says, Rejoice those of you who are in heaven 
But woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil is come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows his time is short. It's like the final throes of an animal that is going, like an alligator that is going to, it has one last bite, one last, any, any energy he can come up to destroy you. That's what the devil wants to do. But he says, if you are in the heavenly, we are to rejoice. Why are we to rejoice? Because we have power over the devil. Because the power of the devil has been canceled. Because we have authority over the devil. Because the devil has been dealt with through the cross and through the blood of Jesus. And we are called to rejoice when the devil makes his last final attempt. Amen. His time will come to an end. He will be bound for a thousand years. He will be released for a short time after the millennial. And then he will be destroyed and all the devil and all his angels forever and ever and ever in everlasting, last, and a fire. Everlasting fire. Yes, amen. Amen? But it says, you who think earthly, you who think that everything is in the earth and can be fixed by man. You who have a, a earthbound mentality that this is all. They want to kill all of the cows for spewing out fall. What's that stuff called? Flatulence out of their rear ends. They want to get rid of the cows. This is insane, ladies and gentlemen. This is insane. And they are, this is what the, the new green deal is. There's farmers in our church that gave me a magazine, and they said that they are now calling on the churches to please talk to the people to be nice to the animals. Do you know that animal crackers, do you know what they did? They took the, they used to have all kinds of animals on there. They took the fences away. They're a bunch of morons. That's what they live for, is so they can change the little red box and protect the animals. But it's okay to murder children in the womb, hundreds of thousands and millions, and they have no conscience. That is the inhabitants of the earth, and God says, woe unto you. Hence the reason for this darkness, the gross, heavy, gloomy darkness. This darkness is in people's minds. This darkness is what's called cancel culture. Do you see what they're saying? We don't want your culture. We don't want your Bible. We don't want your Jesus. Excuse me? That is gross darkness on the hearts and thoughts of people. You talk about statues and everything else, pulling them down. They don't want to reason. Oh, this was a person, do you know why? They do not teach history. We were in a group of people, and God just gave me amnesia. I don't remember where it was. And I asked the kids, how many of you have studied history in your high schools or college. None of them, ladies and gentlemen. They don't want us to know our past. You just might feel good about America. Now, has America done wrong? Yes, we have done wrong. But treat us like you would treat your son. You learn from what you did wrong. You don't cancel out and kill those who have done wrong. Do you understand that? That is gross darkness on the minds of people. They don't want to pay hey, uh, up. Let's just talk about this. This isn't a real wise thing to know to do. They understand one language and one language only. Power and force. So our president said 10 years if you mess with the statute. 10 years in federal prison. Guess what happened? No more statues were pulled down. Statues were pulled down. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Why? Do you have to use brute force? You have to use what you have to use when you have to use it to take care of the problem. Mm -hmm. 
God forbid any of us have a terminal disease. You don't want somebody carving on your bones. You don't want somebody. But if you've got a malignant tumor, go in there, extract it. Come on, take it out. It will be a hard time for you, but your life is more important. They don't want to know reason. We say no to them. We say no to that. We say no to dishonest votes. We say no to CNN who thinks they have the authority to say who the next president of the United States is. Sorry, I am not going to bite into that stake. It is a lie. Amen. Amen. One party of our United States of America will lie and cheat and steal and kill to have their globalist agenda thrust forward. Mm -hmm. They hate America, they are driven by demons, and they are in league with the councils of hell. Yeah. Many have sold their souls yep. to darkness To promulgate their agenda. Their one hindrance, their one single hindrance is born again, Amen. baptized, spirit filled, devil chasing, freedom making, chain breaking, saints of the Most High God. We get in their way. I say, I, my body, my mouth, your body, your mouth, we are instruments for God. We stop the powers of darkness. We speak to conversations that people talk stupid talk. We bring life and light. We expose the darkness. Doesn't mean that we hate people. Doesn't mean we're mean-spirited. But if little Johnny slipped out here and ran out into the road right now, and an 18-wheeler was coming, what would you do? Oh, that's too bad for Johnny. We don't want to get emotional here. You push over the pulpit, you break through the door, you run and you say, Johnny! Because sometimes love's clearest voice is expressed through anger. And we want to take people and put them through seminars and fill them full of drugs so we're a bunch of sappy people with no emotions. God gave you emotions of anger to glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus came into the temple one day, and while he was there, he was watching the worshipers. And he was watching, watching the people who were selling doves and exchanging money. And this man goes up and he says, I would like to buy a lamb sacrifice. Oh, you can't use that lamb. You have to go stand over there in that line. The man walks over to that line and says, here, would you please put a stamp on this so I can give this to the priest? Oh, you have to have our stamp on it. Oh, well, where do you go? You go to that line over there. You go to that line over there, and he says, now oh, we don't take your kind of money. We have to change the money. And by the time this worshiper gets to God, he's fed up to here, he's tired of it all, and Jesus comes in and says, what? What? He takes the money changers. He grabs them. Water comes all over the place. <laughs> and he jumps it over. Who did that? Jesus did that. Yeah. Why did he do it? Because the gold got blocked. You know why gold got blocked? Because he wanted people to worship him in spirit and in truth and not sitting there lying about votes and making money on the changers, making up their own agenda for which one gets stamped. Somebody say amen. Amen.
Christians are rising up across this country to defend our country, to celebrate our liberties, to stand for what's true, to keep churches open, not closed. Do you know what the dark side did with COVID? I know there's a problem with COVID. They used it as an opportunity to control people. They used it as a chance to promote globalism. They saw an open door to close doors of the church. They made it their business to make people afraid and use fear to intimidate people, to get them to shut their mouths and to be nice little citizens with a nice little house and they'll take your house away too. Right now, they are going up and down streets, and you've seen it on television. They'll say, give me your house. That is my house. It's payback time. No, that is not your house. No, that does not belong to you. No, you're not going to have it. No, you're going to shut your mouth. Come on. you got to stand for it. You say, well... This is political. Okay, let's take it to the spiritual realm then. The devil's going to come and steal from your health, steal from your mind, try to drag your kids away, let bitterness get in your marriage. You need to say, no devil, no devil, no devil. You're not having me. You're not having my children. I'm washed in the blood of Jesus. I have pushback. I have resistance, and I resist the powers of darkness in the name of Jesus. Amen. Darkness shall not come upon you. Amen. Somebody I was talking to the other day, I said, well, do you talk to these people that are on this dark side? I said, would you have them to your house? He said, I'm afraid of what that is in them will get on me. (laughs) You don't have to be afraid of that, but you need to be careful that you let your light shine. The Bible says this darkness, this gross darkness is for people who don't believe. This is for people who are in darkness and who do not want light, who willfully choose darkness over light. John 3, 20, to be specific. Many people are now afraid to move forward or to go to church. They're afraid and they're bound with fear because of media and other sources. The Bible says, Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night or the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence. COVID is a pestilence. It is a pest. It is a problem. You resist it. You pray against it. You don't submit to it. Amen. Amen. Nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Amen. Somebody gave me a hug the other day. They said, aren't you afraid of COVID? COVID dies in front of me. Somebody brought some strawberries to give us strawberries. I said, let's give a hug. Aren't you afraid of COVID? COVID dies in my presence. So you're looking for trouble. I'm just simply telling you, I refuse to fear any spirit, any darkness that tries to intimidate and take the freedom off of me, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, or politically, I push it back in the name of Jesus. Amen. It shall not come near me. Would you say that with me? It shall not come. Well, brother, pastor, we know somebody who got it. 
pray over them, pray they come through it. I'm not discounting that there is a problem. I do refuse to succumb to its fear. Many people today are afraid. You can see it on their faces. They're just afraid. They, they, and the mass is part of it, but they're, they don't know what to do. They, they, they just, there's people, my relatives, they've been like this. I don't know if it's changed. Literally, they'll take the food. They put it on their doorstep. They knock on the door and they leave. They're afraid. That is sad. That's very sad. No, how you doing? Look through the window, smile. Sorry. Cannot buy into it. God says, look unto me. People of the world, look to the world. God says, look unto me, all the ends of the earth, and you will be saved. Hearken unto me, God says, and follow that which is right. Seek the Lord and look unto the rock of whence you came. What is he saying there? Let your focus be upon Jesus. Only, not only will darkness not come upon you, but guess what happens? The light, the glory. He says the glory of the Lord. I've also seen people where the presence of the Lord is just shining in the midst of darkness, in the midst of COVID. I can see that means a Christian. Oh, that's that person right over there. They trust the Lord. The glory of the Lord comes upon people. When the darkness, he says, when you see gross darkness come upon the people, when you see this, when you feel it, what are we supposed to do? So glad you asked. When others cower, here's what the word of the Lord is. Arise, shine, for your light has come. What is your personal rise? What does it mean to rise up? Here's what it means. First of all, we need to break ourselves of self-preservation. I've got to be careful. This is all about me. i got to begin to do this. I don't want to fit. There are people, ladies and gentlemen, that are my friends, they say they don't want to talk about Republicans and Democrats. You know why? Because they'll leave their church. It doesn't matter. we got to be true. I don't care if it's Lutherans or pastors or Northern Lights Christian Center. We need to be looking for the truth and break away from, oh, I must be careful. Why? So you can live one more year in misery? <clears throat> Give me liberty or... Yeah. There's a man who broke himself free from self-preservation. It is in us. We protect us. Protect me. Protect mine. Protect what I am. This is my stuff. I'm going to hide it in here. I'm going to put it in here. I've got a secret little box. So I can have my stuff. But everybody else is hungry. Here's my stuff. Here's my stuff. I've got some dark chocolate in this. I'm going to eat this dark chocolate while the rest of the world. we got to break ourselves from the tendency of habits. This worry is about me, mine, and ours. Fear is an intimidation. The Bible says don't turn inward, but turn upward. For a good outlook, you must have a good uplook. Every day, Lord, thank you for who you are. I'm going to break away from this. Jesus says, I'm leaving you to his disciples. I'm going to the Father. Because I have said these things, sorrow has filled your heart. You will weep and lament, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. We're going to have sorrow. We're going to feel pain in this world. But the good news is, God is going to bring us through. Not only break free from self Preservation, but we need to bring God's glory to people. This is a time, I believe, we're going to see more people saved, whoever gets in office. But we're praying for God's man to be put in office. Amen. We're going to bring God's glory to people. I have found a hiding place. 
The Bible says, Thou art my hiding place. You will preserve me in the time of trouble. I have found a fountain of life, and his name is Jesus. He's altogether lovely. He's altogether, he takes time to listen to me. He fills my life with his loving kindness. Are you looking to Jesus? Are you spending time with Jesus? Are you praying to Jesus? Are you drawing near to Jesus? Jesus has been our only hope. Jesus is our only hope. And Jesus will always be our only hope. In our time of trouble, call to the Lord. If we have sinned, call to the Lord. If we're afraid, call to the Lord. If we're discouraged, call to the Lord. Whatever our emotional state, we need to come to Jesus. For with thee is a fountain of life, says the psalmist. And in thy light we see light, inner light, spiritual light, revelational light. When you are with Jesus, it will show you can't hide it. Amen. Amen. The last few weeks, and it happened this morning, I'm speaking on a subject and a message, and somebody will they'll say the exact words I'm going to speak on. This morning it happened, Brother Gerald, as where he said in exactly, yes, that's on my heart. What, what is that? We're listening, we're pressing in, we're one body, we're sharing. Somebody's down, let's encourage him. We don't kick him, we don't get mad at him, we don't, we don't dishonor him for fearing. We say, hey, there's a better way. Come on, get back up again. God loves you, God's with you, God's got this. How many of you said today to me, God's got this, don't worry about it. It's going to be all right. God's going to bring us through. He's going to take us through this election. The tr uh, untruths are going to be exposed. Lying. When our state of Wisconsin has more votes and we have registered, does anybody see something wrong with that? Yeah. There's something wrong with that. It needs to be investigated. We need to send federal agents. There needs to be a Republican and a Democrat watching over every single vote. We need to go back and make sure. What we're asking is not for a Republican to get in, not for a Democrat to get in. We want honest and fair elections in our country. We want truth to prevail. We don't want cheating and lying. We want fairness and truth in every sector of our society. Somebody yes. say amen. amen. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were unschooled and ordinary people. And they marveled and were amazed. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. There's something about being with Jesus. Amen? Okay. The final one is become rays of light yourself. Just like the Bible says to the, the reason we have a, a lantern, a light, is to hold it up. And we need to perceive ourselves as a light. So who am I? I'm Tim Warner. I'm going to the store today, but I'm light. I'm Tim Warner. I'm a Christian. I'm bought in the blood of Jesus. I'm going to the voting poll, and I'm going to encourage everybody that I see there. I'm going to talk about the goodness of God. I'm going to make people smile. Wow, because I am one ray of light, but I'm going to make a difference for every single person that I can. At the end of the day, when I lay my head down, I want to look back and say, God, your kingdom is just a little bit further than it was yesterday because I am a beam of light. I'm changing this world. We're on radio. We're on video. We're on ways to communicate to people the goodness of the Lord in any situation. We dispense the light. We get up and go. If you perceive yourself as a ray of God's light and to change the atmosphere of those places that you go, gloom and doom will get out of the way. Things that are going bad will get better. The world that's going down will change by the faithfulness of God inside of you. We are losing it all? No. 
I'm gaining Christ. St. Francis of Assisi, you know this. He prayed this prayer. Lord, where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is doubt, let me bring faith. Where there is despair, let me bring light, or hope, rather. Where there is darkness, let me bring light. Where there is sadness, let me bring joy. Amen? We're difference makers. God is counting on you, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. He's counting on us. Don't misunderstand what I'm going to say. There's one thing to be a down, out, I'm a blasted, rotten, dirty sinner. The Lord, I need you. There's a truth in that. But there's also a truth to say, Lord, I'm not going to get so overwhelmed with my personal pity party. I want to take a stand next to you, and I don't want to be the guy that you have to waste three quarters of my day to get me up enough to put a smile on my face. I'm going to grow up, and I'm going to get up, and I want to stand next to you, and I want to be a faithful witness for you, whether people like it or not. I want to make a difference in my life. I don't want to be one of the pity party problem children that you have. I want to rise up. I want to grow up. I want to mature up so that I can be faithful in this day, in this time, when the pressure's on. I want to speak a word of light in the midst of darkness. When people, I want to electrify every room that I want to enter with the presence of the Lord. I want the words that come out of my mouth to be honoring to God, good to people, and blessing our nation. In closing, Clap now. <laughs> <laughs> Missed a good chance. <laughs> you might be asking, how do I arise? I get what you're saying. I understand the problems we have in our world. I see the cheating and lying. I understand the gross darkness that's upon people. I see that the networks are hooked up with Tartarus right now. How do, I, how do I do this? Pray. Everybody say pray. 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 The Bible says pray without ceasing. That means I'm driving my car and I'm praying. But don't count your, your prayer time in your car as total prayer time. It's not the same. Do you understand that? It's not the same. We had a pastor here, and one of my pastor friends were, were here, and he says, do you to my friend who's a pastor, he said, do you pray? He says, yeah, I, I pray every day. And he says, I pray when I drive. Pastor, I pray when I get out and I do this and that. Pastor was with me, said, none of that counts. Don't count that on your praying. Do you pray? The Bible says pray without ceasing, but it also says to get alone, to get quiet, and to pray when you don't have other things going on. Right? Because I'm driving my car, do I pray? Oh, I pray, I pray. Sometimes when I was on the, I, I, a specific time, a, a good chunk of time, I would pray, I would pray for people. But if a deer pulls in front of me, I'm going to stop praying and hit my brakes. That means there's something that has priority over my praying. You understand that? But when I'm praying, praying, nothing takes priority over that. I'm with God. Amen? So there's praying without ceasing, there's praying personal times, personal devotion, and then there's times where we pray for one another. We pray for, oh, you're feeling bad? Let me pray with you. Let me just join hands with you. Let me touch you. Let me just pray for you and bless you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's going to be all right. It's going to be, amen. It's going to be all right. So, that kind of praying. Next is, ready for this? Praise the Lord. Just say, Lord, thank you. Sometimes you hear so much, you feel so much. You, you, we're, we're, 
they take that blasted 80 seconds around the world. You ever see that? If you didn't have a problem, 80 seconds later, you're so heavy with all of the world, right? And it's just like, holy cats, what just happened to me? You're not built to take on 80 second problems of everything that goes in the world. But I can do this. Lord, I praise you. You are good. I don't know. I feel bad right now, but I praise you anyway. My emotions are down, but I praise you anyway. I'm battling this, but I give you praise, God. You are good. You are merciful. Oh, thank you, Lord, for caring for me. Thank you for that birthday party, surprise birth. Thank you for that trip to Israel. Come on, somebody say amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, in the midst of it. People are thinking they're caring. Thank you, Lord, that you're watching all over me. Yes, thank you, Lord, for that new grandbaby. Thank you, Lord, for that child. Thank you, Lord, for Dwayne and his. Thank you, Lord, for Rick Gates and his faithfulness, teaching them. Thank you, Lord, for Shannon. Thank you, Lord, for Esther, who's working. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We're thanking. We're thanking. We're praising the Lord, right? Not big stuff, is it? It's very doable. And this one is probably the hardest one we have, and that is let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. Lord, help what comes out of here. I say something, it's like, ah, no. I, I, I retract that, I'm sorry. No, that's not what I meant. No, God is going to take us through this. God is God. But they're saying this, and CNN is saying, I know, I get up to here, I get up to here. It comes out here. No. God, everybody say, God has got this. God is fighting for us. It is going to be all right. God is God. I serve God. I will be with God in the end, and God is with me right now. What am I doing? I'm proclaiming. The Bible says death and life one, are in the power of the tongue. So I'm going to choose to speak Life. I'm not going to deny problems, but I'm going to transcend the problems of this world with the truth and revelation of God. I want to be a light that's shiny. I want to join myself with other light rays to make a difference. Arise and shine. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord. Would you stand with me?